Oh, um, same place. We're still in New York. Same uh, Creative Commons license, same explanation, same uh, uh, encouragement to, to share and so forth. I also still have some new slides, and so this slide is not on your slide deck, so any slide that has that little white spot in the bottom is a, is a new slide. It's either changed from what's in your book, reordered, or additional. So now I'll explain as we go along. So today is uh, I'm going to talk to you about Galaxy and how Galaxy is um, uh, can be used in a number of different ways. One of which is on Amazon, but we're actually going to not use the Amazon version. Although I did include in the at the end of the class notes, if you did want to use it on Amazon, how to how to go and do that. Um, new sort of uh, another hashtag that is. It's interesting when you d decide to name a, a software package, if you use a very common word, you make it very hard for people to find you. And so Galaxy, if you just Google Galaxy, you will not find the Galaxy software package. You have to do Galaxy, Bioinformatics, and something else. But if the use Galaxy hashtag, you will find on Twitter, you will find all the things of people that use Galaxy to do bioinformatics. It will be the same uh, people. So that's um, the way they... Uh, so same disclaimer as before that I'm not gonna I don't make any money out of any products I may mention. I I am on the Galaxy Scientific Advisory Board, uh, which is a NIH funded uh, project, but I don't I do that for free, so I don't get any money out of that. So, but if Galaxy is successful, it makes me look good, I guess. Uh, that may be one benefit. So the the outline of what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna um, look at workflows and examples of using Galaxy perform uh, DNA sequence manipulation. Um, the ideas of reproducible science and Galaxy, uh, the various uh, Galaxy servers and different types of Galaxy instances, and so I'll explain why you would use one versus the other. Uh, putting and getting data in and out of Galaxy, uh, processing data in Galaxy, and an example, I'm going to, in the lecture, I'm going to do an example of using Galaxy for an RNA-C pipeline but we're not going to do that in the lab. We're going to actually do similar things that we've done in the last couple of days in the in Galaxy in the lab with R Richard this afternoon. But tomorrow you will see RNA. We're going to start RNA seq per se. So this is not an overview of RNA seq. So I don't want you to bog down on those kinds of details, but more as an example of the kinds of things that Galaxy can do, and and you will see tomorrow uh, we will be doing RNA seq command line. So we'll be doing going back on the cloud and doing RNA seq on on, on a different way. So what today's lecture is about, so first of all, how many of you have a Galaxy instance running at your institution? So that's that's a fair interesting uh, number. How many of you have never used Galaxy? That's very surprising. Um, so, so Galaxy is an alternative way uh, of helping biologists to, to do computational biology. And, uh, and you'll see through, throughout the lecture, it's, it's not the only way because you've done it other ways as well already, but it's a very powerful way and it's also a very powerful way for sharing and, 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 and working with colleagues. So seeing some of these slides you've seen already, so I'm gonna actually quick jump me over them to the important part, which is that some of the things uh, about the cells is, is reproducibility, is, is doing experiments. And so we've done that slide already. And the thing about do, these experiments is that um, you do them once and you want to repeat them. If you do it 100 or 1,000 times, you probably want to script them up or, or find a way of automating the process. Galaxy allows you to do that quite easily. It's a sort of simple user interface to uh, reproduce uh, and repeat uh, common uh, tasks. And actually some new things that have been introduced into Galaxy in the past year allow you to group files together and to sort of do actions on groups of files. So this was a, actually a, a gripe that people had about Galaxy. It's okay, it's fine to do one file and push it through and repeat that one file, but if I want to do a thousand files, how do I do it? So they've actually um, come up with a solution for that now. And also, 
The output of Galaxy is shareable with your friends or with the world, so you can make it a public or you can share it with specific colleagues and so forth. So all of that is available within and it's very relatively uh, simple within the Galaxy infrastructure. Um, so, and the other thing that Galaxy is very good at is keeping sort of metadata about the versions of the tools you're using, the arguments you're using, and so forth. So it makes reproducibility of, of science uh, possible. So some of the requirements that, that Galaxy meets, which makes this uh, possible, is that project should be open source, and the Galaxy project is an open source, like I mentioned, NIH-funded project. Um, the solution should be useful to a large uh, community, well supported, and, and, and Galaxy definitely is flexible, expandable, scalable, cloud aware, user friendly, and so forth. And so, so this is what you would want for any project. And there are several solutions. Galaxy is not the only solution. Um, one solution is uh, this came out of a paper written by Robert Gentleman, which is basically he's recommending in this paper, which is actually a very nice uh, paper. I recommend you have a look at it. He's recommending that every figure of a paper should be reproducible. You should actually provide the R script that allowed you to generate the figure in the paper. And so in this sort of uh, uh, example, he reproducible research and he uses bioinformatics as a case study where not only do you get the data, but you also get the, the script that allowed you to generate the figure so that you can put in your own data see how it looks. You can reproduce the data figure yourself, and so that's totally reproducible, and, and, and you make it shareable with the world. And so R is a, and Bioconductor use that, and so we have actually a separate workshop to, to teach you how to use these tools, and it is, it's quite, uh, quite useful, and, and it's, very, it's a very, quite a large community and very useful community. Another uh, interesting paper is uh, published uh, recently, I guess just a couple of years ago, I think, 10 simple rules on reproducible computational research. And the 10 rules are for every results, you know, keep track of how you, you produced it, avoid manual data manipulation steps, archive and the exact version of all external programs used, a version control all custom scripts, um, so something like GitHub or, or, or uh, other sort of similar repositories, uh, record all intermediate results when possible in standardized formats. Uh, for analysis that in, induce uh, randomness, note um, underlying random seeds. So BWA is an example of such a tool that actually there is a randomness step in, 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 that B, in an alignment from BWA in that if a read has the same probability of being at two places, it will randomly put it at one or the other. And so if you run the same experiment twice, you may get two different results. Both results will be equally good, but understanding that, that your, the tool you're using has some randomness in it is also very important to, to understand. Um, always store raw data uh, behind uh, the plots, uh, sort of allusion to also to um, gentleman's uh, paper. Um, generate uh, hierarchical analysis outputs, allowing layers of increasing uh, details to be interpreted, uh, connect uh, textual statement to underlying results, and provide public access of script uh, runs and results. And so this is all things, turns out that the, the two guys that are uh, middle author on this, Anton and James, are the two leaders of the Galaxy project. And so, of course, Galaxy abides by all these rules. <laughs> Um, another, but it's not, so Galaxy is not the only sort of pipeline automatable that keeps metadata around. A, use, a tool we use at OICR for all our, our pipelines is Sequare. And, and Sequare is an, another open source project, and, and that's their page if you want to have a look at that. It's, a, it's, um, it's not as user friendly as <laughs> Galaxy, but it's probably able to handle uh, larger data sets and larger pipelines and, and has deals better with, with dealing with uh, uh, compute infrastructures and so forth. And so it's for the larger projects. And of course Galaxy is a solution that we're going to study today. Lots of papers on Galaxy. Here's a couple of them. 
here's another one and so galaxy comes in multiple flavors and so if you go to the galaxyproject.org which is basically the the galaxy homepage uh, you will see all the various uh, types of galaxy the usegalaxy.org which is the main public galaxy server which is the one we're going to use today um, you can also download Galaxy and install it in your own uh, server, institution, and so forth. And I definitely encourage institutions that have the resources, the computer resources, to have a local version. Uh, with that, though, comes some overhead of maintenance and, and so forth. So it's, it's, if you have a bioinformatics core facility at your institution, that's sort of a really good way of, of handling it. What comes with that, though, is some institutions have made their Galaxy server publicly available, but what they've done also is they've made it, they've fine-tuned it to serve a specific task. And so we'll, we'll, we'll um, uh, I'll show you some examples, but some of them, for example, have made RNA-seq specific uh, Galaxy servers or Galaxy servers that deal with uh, metagenomics or galaxy servers that deal with specific plants and so they they are good for those resources of those biological niches because they they keep track of the things that need to be done for those for those communities so there's a cloud version of galaxy also so you can do you can run and we have run in the past uh, this this workshop on on um, on amazon and the reason we didn't do it this year or the last couple of years is that we found that the, the public server has actually gotten more, much more robust and, and, and usable and is a bit, the nice thing about the public server is it's the most up-to-date one that has all the tools, most up-to-date versions of many of the tools we use. So that's why it's sort of um, a bit lazy, I would say, but it's saving of time. Yes? It's all pre-installed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can upload tools to Galaxy as well. So and that's you can't do that to the public. You can't use that. You can't upload your own tools to the public server, but you can definitely update tools to your institutional version. I mean, if you you have to have root access basically to be able to install tools into uh, a Galaxy instance. Or you can also do it on, on, on the Amazon or Amazon or whichever cloud instance you want to use it. You can go install tools there. The way uh, I'm going to get to it, actually, I'll, I'll come back to that to that point a bit later about installing tools. So, so which um, which tools? And so, the um, uh, so, so the main versus local, which is actually your own instance, versus a cloud version, versus the others. And so if you have uh, big, small to large to medium data sets, then all of the various clouds are, are fine, or sorry, various galaxies are fine. If you're using uh, uh, or ordinary sort of uh, requirements, these are all very fuzzy, hand waving, but uh, a local instance can have more resources than the, the main version. The main version has several hundred cores and I think has a limit of 250 um, gigs of, of, of storage per individual. So they actually uh, give a lot of storage. And actually, if you need more than that, they'll, they'll, give, you, uh, they'll give you that. They're, they're very generous with their storage. Um, they are... Uh, and it's all free, so it's 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 quite uh, um, quite useful. So if your data sets are large, very large, they say you can't use main. So they won't give you petabytes. They won't give you. You may get one terabyte, maybe, uh, but um, it's it's not a bottomless pit, right? So there's it's used by the, everybody on the world, and uh, I've warned them today that thirty of us are going to show up. And so, uh, and they, they, they assured us that it should, it should be fine. But if, you know, a few hundred other people decide to show up at the same time, it'll be interesting. Uh, so this is the homepage for Galaxy Project, uh, the homepage. And so 
It has um, uh, news information about use Galaxy, so that's a link to the public server. How to get Galaxy, so how to download the software and install it. How to learn about Galaxy, so there's lots of video tutorials, uh, news group. Uh, they use uh, Biostar for their help desk uh, maintaining, maintaining all their documentation. And they also are, there's lots of mailing lists and the tool shed, which I'll talk a little bit more about, and the wiki, which has got information, some more useful information. So this is a usegalaxy.org um, homepage, which you logged in already. On the left side are basically all the tools. On the right side is the history of everything you've done so far in this session, or if you if you've registered as you have, it will remember your history from session to from logging in and logging out. Then it'll it'll keep track of all that. So that's very useful. And in the middle part of the galaxy is is your workspace. It's where things it's where you enter things, where you view files and so forth. And you can and there's uh, buttons on the either side so that you can expand the middle part to get rid of the two side panels, blue side panels, and so you can have your whole window dedicated to your workspace. And so that's a very useful way of, of dealing with that. GetGalaxy.org is instructions on how to get the software and so forth. UseGalaxy.org slash cloud is how to use it in the cloud environment. And so there's multiple, so there's the Amazon, but you can also, if you have your own academic cloud, you can install it there and make it available to the community as well. And this is um, a, a page that has all the public Galaxy servers that are available worldwide. So uh, last year there was 50 plus, this year there's 60 plus. And so these are all various Galaxy servers that um, are, are available, like I mentioned, specific with uh, certain projects and so forth. And so uh, Galaxy integrates the input of data sources. Galaxy allows you to use many tools that uh, don't need to install and maintain. Uh, Galaxy allows you to maintain workflows, reuse them, and share them, uh, list and publish experiments. So if you actually, if you publish a paper, you could actually put in a Galaxy workflow with your paper that sort of reproduces the data that you've just published. And you can make that publicly available, making it sort of transparent and clear to the community how you generated that data. And so there's some journals like uh, GigaScience, which actually have their, have their own instance of Galaxy as well, that journal, that allows you to, to put, publish pipelines that are published in that journal. But, but if, even if you publish in a journal that doesn't have their own uh, Galaxy instance, you can put it on Galaxy main, on, use, on usegalaxy.org, the main server, and publish it there and make it and tie it to your publication. And um, you can actually also do that in the cloud. So you can actually have a pipeline and have a make an Amazon uh, machine image and publish that as well and make that available to the community if that's the way you want to work. Uh, and so the strong thing behind Galaxy, that sort of the driving force of the, pro the whole project, is to make things reproducible. And, um, and Galaxy, w with that comes the fact that it's really good at keeping histories and how, what you did and how you did it and uh, making it easy to work with collaborators uh, down the hall or across the globe. Uh, and so one could argue that um, really the, the power behind Galaxy is that it was designed for biologists. And it's not designed for computer scientists. It's not designed for people that like to do command line stuff and so forth. So maybe none of you fit this model anymore now that you've become command line experts. But uh, at the same time, it, if you need to show something some, to somebody, if you need to make it reproducible and share data and so forth, it, it may be the, a great platform to do that. Um, there's a lot of people that work on, on Galaxy, on making tools. So one of the things that the Galaxy community encourages is that when you develop a tool, make it so rapid so that it's available for Galaxy. So if I have a new tool, I can make a version of that tool that's available in Galaxy, and that, that helps your, your tool. And I'll come back to that a bit later. Yeah. 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 
So, so your, your, your script would require some input file some out, and would have some output of a certain format. And so you, you wrap it in Galaxy and you tell it, okay, it's going to look for an input file of this format, of this file type that looks like this. And, and your GUI will say, put the file name here that's input, run this script on it, and generate this output file of this type. And so it knows, so all of that. And now that tool, that sc your script could be wrapped in Galaxy and put in the tool shed, which I'll talk about in a second, which is a place where people go and pick up tools that they will include in their own Galaxy instance. And now they will have on their menu, on their sidebar on the left there that I mentioned, they will have your favorite script as, a, as one of the menu items to pick from in the tools that they have available. But does Galaxy provide like similar you know, programming Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it provides instructions, not an API as much as a as a, you will you would develop you would de, uh, deposit your script Galaxy wrapped in the tool shed, uh, so that people can now download it and make it available uh, for them. But if your script needs to go speak to other parts in the world, that could be part of the pipeline itself, and and, and Galaxy is able to, to take data from the UCSC browser, for example, and I'll talk about that in other places in, in the world. Yeah. So, um, so one of the big things behind, again, behind Galaxy is it helps biologists to deal with tools and data. It's been funded mostly of late by the NIH, but also by uh, other places like NSF, Penn State, and so forth. The two lead PIs now are at Hopkins and at uh, Penn State University, and uh, more details about that on the on the wiki and on um, on the many tutorials. So, um, the, some of the problems with Galaxy is not all galaxies are created the same. So, Galaxy team is moving to sort of working actually providing Galaxy as an empty shell. So that from which you then sort of have like the, the app store type model where you go to the app store and then you download the tools you want to have imported into your own Galaxy version. But being aware of all the various, if you have a Galaxy server, a public Galaxy server, not the, the main one, but the and one that's dealing with your community, it, it's good to keep track of that one and seeing which tools in database. So one of the things that Galaxy main uh, has a limited set of, but it has quite a few, is for example, reference genome. So it has obviously the latest human reference genome and mouse and all the, the model organisms and so forth, but it may not have, uh, if you're working on oysters or, or whatever other sort of weird organism, it may not have the reference genome for that one. And so you would have to download it, install it in a, in a private instance for that. Yeah. Yeah, so companies are able, they could download Galaxy to their, to their and within, put it within their firewall. And then you can, if you have access to it within, if you're working with that company, they would give you access to it within, to go within the firewall, and you could use the Galaxy server there. So in other words, uh, using Galaxy doesn't mean that the output of the research must be publicly available, no. Okay. By default, it's private to you. And then you can add email addresses, for example, to people that want at it. It's not, I would not, Galaxy itself is not a, uh, you shouldn't put data on there which you don't want the rest of the world to, to break into and so forth. It's not, you know, when you need the security levels of, of many uh, companies or, or even uh, for human genome sequences and so forth. For those cases, what you have to do is you have to put an instance internally to your own firewall. So under YCR, so what would we have a, an instance of Galaxy within the OICR space. And so you have to be in the OICR to be able to use it, or you can use the public one, but if you want to use one on human data, for example, you have to use the one, the, inter the internal one we have available to our funders. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the, um, so the tool shed I mentioned is a is a really good solution at uh, to address the problems of 
of multiple tools and, and different tools being available and so forth. So the um, Toolshed basically allows you, if you're an administrator of a Galaxy instance, you can go to the Toolshed and download the tools which have been Galaxy wrapped or they're Galaxy ready uh, to um, to be installed and so forth. So you can search things and so in this example I search for SAM and I have a bunch of, of tools related that have SAM somewhere It's just doing a string search as a tag or what have you. And so it shows me all the tools I could install on my server um, and for uh, working with SAM files. And so the general workflow in Galaxy is that you log into it, you get data and you upload your data to the server, you manipulate your data somehow you can repeat this manipulation or, or, or do it better sort of as you see fit. Then you save your output, you save your workflow, and into uh, sort of, uh, uh, so you have workflow files basically you can save, and you can publish the page which includes the data with the workflow as a, as a, as a page also. So the cloud version looks very similar to the, the one uh, usegalaxy.org. Uh, it has the tools on the left, has uh, the history on the right, and the workspace in the middle. And it sort of reminds you you're in the cloud by t saying Galaxy in the cloud. And if you look at all the tools that are available, um, it's sort of the same types of tools that I uh, have available. But uh, last year, the year before, I did a difference between the list. I took the list of tools that were in the cloud version versus the one that used Galaxy. And I found a bunch of tools that were only in the cloud and a bunch of tools which are only in Galaxy, so they're not the same. So the, you have to sort of take that into account. Um, and uh, and each of these, this is an example of some of the tools, and each of these bulleted items actually has a bunch of submenus of tools. And so the way I, when I'm looking for a tool, instead of scrolling through the long list of menu, I just type in in the top left corner there, you type in the, the word you're looking for, the tool, FastQC, for example, and then you type FastQC, and then you see there's two or three instances that reference FastQC, one of which is called FastQC. So that's the one you want. Um, so uh, some example, again, of the differences between the two, uh, the two of them. So both of them, both the cloud and the, this, the one on use Galaxy, I don't use our talk to UCSC. So they're, they're APIs, basically, or they're uh, they programmatically link to each other, so they know their Galaxy, usegalaxy.org, and and uh, UCSC browser are aware of each other. So you can save files to Galaxy, and Galaxy can send files to the UCSC browser, and so you can uh, work that way. And so, um, for example, you can download the latest version of the various annotation files, uh, the genome that you would need for. Uh, finding genes and so forth, annotating genes on a, on a genome browser. Um, very uh, flexible graphical and, and, and table views. So most of the time Galaxy uses a table view, so it, it deals with tables very uh, very easily and, and, and that's the way it, it likes to, to work best. So this is for those of you who haven't been to the UCSC genome browser, this is an example of it. Um, other examples that of data formats output from UCSC are tab separated sequences of so fast day, which are different from fast queue. What's the difference between fast day and fast queue? Quick spot question. No quality score. Very good. Um, it has bed files or browser extended extensible uh, data format files, uh, GFF file formats, and, and GTF file formats. So here's an example of a uh, FAST A file, so nucleotide from uh, uh, Homo sapiens, chromosome 22. Uh, here's a bed file format, which are used in, in uh, many, so it's uh, chromosome, start, stop, and, and some uh, information about the types of features that you're annotating. Uh, GFF file formats, again, uh, chromosome, start, stop, and a number of, you'll have exons and, and genes and so forth. And um, in gene uh, GTF is a GFF, but specific for coding sequence uh, features that are used to extract those fields. So, um, interesting thing in, in Galaxy is that we have, uh, you can publish uh, in pages, and you can go look on the Galaxy server 
and see the pages that have been that are publicly available. So you can see uh, other people's work already. Uh, for example, um, some of the ones we, we are there'll be uh, things on um, Galaxy RNA seq analysis uh, exercise, for example. So a lab to do, and then communities rate them also. So some some get five stars or some get no stars because they haven't been rated, um, and uh, and so forth. And so they usually those often m many of these are, are come from Galaxy staff, but they're actually anybody in the world can submit these and make them available. So I'm going to go through some an example of the RNA-seq uh, exercise and um, exam it's just more as a, as a use case scenario, but we're not going to do RNA-seq today, but we will tomorrow. So the analysis is to uh, take um, RNA-seq data from this paired end from the Human uh, Body Map Project, which is an um, Illumina-generated uh, data set. And we'll be looking at adrenal and uh, brain tissue and um, from a specific region of chromosome 19. So it's, again, it's a, it's a, it's a toy or, or a classroom data set, which is a, uh, uh, specific to a, a one region of the human genome. And so um, the uh, adrenal uh, gland is on top of your kidney and uh, the... What was the other one? It was the adrenal and brain. Well, you know where your brain is, right? <laughs> so this part you've all done already, the logging in. So now that you've logged in, um, you're coming back in as a returning user. Has anybody had problems with this in the class? Is everybody okay with this step? We don't need to do it now, but I just want to make sure that you're all okay. Okay. So basically, once you've logged in, sort of the page looks like this. And if you look at your um, uh, your preferences, then it gives you your sort of settings the way you what you've set up and so forth. In this lab exercise, we're getting four uh, files, and so you can get files by loading them from your computer or by providing a URL. And so, in the lab, we're going to do today. We're going to give you a URL to uh, to get these the files into your, your computer. Um, and then, so this is an example of getting with the URL. And the what, don't do it now, right? Don't start doing it. You have a question? Yeah, you could like here, we can share. Don't do it now. <laughs> yeah, but don't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what's your question? <laughs> but you're not doing it now, right? <laughs> okay, I'll ask the question when we do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so this Because I want you to pay attention. Because he needs you to pay attention to where all the clicking parts are, so that. And then Richard is going to do the same thing for his lab when he does the lab. So with what he's doing, you will follow him, and you will click like he clicks. Okay, and he's telling you to click this high. You click this high. <laughs> you know how you can be, right? So, sorry. <laughs> Your, you tell people what they need to do. <laughs> so when you um, so on the side panel, on the right hand side panel, you have the history I mentioned to you. So what happens when you start a command? It first shows up as a gray box. And the colors here are probably better in the manual. So it shows up as a gray box, which means it hasn't started doing anything yet. When it's in process, it goes into a yellow box, and then next to the middle of the box there, you see a little poorly thing next to the 12, so it's actually processing that, that, that step. And once it's finished, it turns green. And uh, if it, and green assumes that everything went well. This is when things don't go well. If you see red boxes, that means your step didn't work properly. You use the wrong command, you use the wrong file type, uh, there's could be, or the program failed or whatever. And, um, and this one is a, is a transfer file that's being fed a little arrow into it. It's being uploading a large file, and so it's processing still. Another thing that, uh, whoops, sorry, it's my screensaver or something. And I think, so once a file has been, is on this, it shows up, it has these three icons next to it. 
So there's an I, a pencil, and an X. So the I, I, I call it poke the I, and it asks, basically you want to see the file, so you poke, you click on that on the I, and then in the middle panel it shows you what the file looks like. The, um, the pencil is to edit the attributes of that file, so it allows you to rename the file, or to give it a, or add notes that from, you know, that, that you may want to say where you got the file from or something like that, and so forth. So you, you're allowed to keep all, all sorts of things. And you're allowed to, and you can delete that, that file itself. So that's the file sort of, of thing. Uh, so if you poke the eye, that's an example with a, basically it shows you, this is a fastq file, and it shows you what it looks like in the middle of the file. If you, Edit the file itself? No. You have, to do that. you have to do that before you load it. So, what? Give me an example. Of what you would want to do? Well, like that's kind of, well, obviously you don't set the fast file. Right? Yeah. So okay. Let's say you have a BTF, and for some reason you, uh, you want to delete some values. So you can actually so within Galaxy. You can filter, you can grep, basically, so you can select lines. You can do that on, on line formatted files. So there's actually a lot of text editing features, which we're not going to go over in this uh, class, I don't think, that are allowed to do in, 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 in uh, so there's a whole section of text editing. Uh, so you can select columns, you can select rows, and so forth. So all of those things are possible within Galaxy, yes. So you don't have to do any Unix command up front before you load the file. You can actually, which is doable, of course, in Unix as well. But you can do it with the Galaxy, with the help of Galaxy. I said, keep me. I want columns three, five, and seven, and I sort by column one and output to this file. Yeah, that's all possible. So you can edit attributes. So one of the things I like to do is I, so for example, in uh, the brain tissue, so I like to put. In Name. So that doesn't show up naturally, so I have to put that in. And it has this URL where I got the file from. I put that, I copied that from the name file into the info file. So I keep track of where the file came from by adding that to my notes and into the, the file. Another uh, new feature that happened in the last uh, set, in the last uh, while, is this three flag, the three little icons here. One of which is to is highlighted here, which is to operate on multiple data sets. So you're now able to select multiple, let's say, FASTQ files or multiple VCF files, and select them and make them into one data set, and then do actions on that one data set. So you're now able to select whichever file you want uh, quite easily. So if you do, if I click, by clicking on the um, operate on multiple data set, what happens is that these boxes show up next to the file, then you can select all or none, then you, or you can manually select the one you want to group them, to group things together, and so forth. So uh, this is, uh, you can, and so I've selected all of them. I can build a data set list, or I can uh, build a data set pair, or, or build a list of data set pairs, so there's all sorts of things you can do um, for that. And it turns out what I should have done here, which I didn't do, is build the data set pairs because brain one and two are a pair of forward and, and uh, are paired ends of, of from a one re, one sequencing run and uh, brain one or adrenal you know, one and two are the other pair. So uh, example of workflow in Galaxy also we have um, grooming. So this grooming is more they call it grooming, but basically. Uh, what we talked about yesterday about using the old Sanger uh, file format and a different uh, uh, letter scale that are used. Uh, so um, Galaxy is able to convert between these various types. If your tool requires old format or, or new format, then you can use uh, Galaxy to, to, to change those things. We talked this morning about QC, FastQC. So you can run FastQC on, on your files. You can, then you can uh, get FastQC results, and you can within the brow, the middle section, which is your results section as well as your working section, you can look at at, at uh, your uh, results in FastQC, or you can look at it in text format, so text format or graphical format. 
And so this is for the four files that I was talking about. Um, you can trim files if you want to also, and that's possible within uh, Galaxy with various criteria and so forth. Um, to remove the bad bases and so forth. Um, these are uh, files so that you've accumulated, and there's a lot, all sorts of different things you can do with them. If you're doing this exercise, you may get different numbers on the left, because the numbers are basically every next, are, gives you a uh, sequential list of, of, of numbers of files. As you generate them, it adds a number. If you delete them, uh, it, it then uses it again. If you repeat an experiment, then you have multiple, you, have, you don't have 16, 17, 18, you have 18, 19, 20, plus 16, 17, 18. So you have all these numbers uh, accumulating. So the numbers you get when you're doing exercises may not be exactly what's in the class notes, but that gives you an idea of, of what... Uh, so here in this example, we use top hat. So I'm just skip quickly sort of, uh, with paradigm reads, and we know the uh, distance between the, the reads. From the body map uh, data uh, site and so you can uh, now um, this is using top hat and you can use the various files of sets or or unique files and so forth as we did before using we're not going to do this in the lab but this step would take about 30 minutes if we were to do it in the lab even with this small data set and um, then it generates a, a number of output files which are now available in the various viewers. So there's actually a... Um, uh, so Galaxy has its own browser internally to look at, at output files, and this would be an RNA-seq uh, way of looking at data. I'm trying to think. If you click on the file, there's, a, there's actually... I forgot to put that icon. Maybe I'll add it later. Um, there's a way of looking at... at uh, at um, specific uh, graphic output. Uh, there's ways of sharing uh, files, and so you have all your, um, and you can view them or share it, publish and so forth, and you can share your history with colleagues, and you can extract workflows. So that's from the uh, uh, top uh, right button, uh, which has this uh, extended menu set. So extract workflow, it takes all the steps you've taken and it puts them all out in the list, and then you can decide, okay, well, this step I repeated twice because once I got it wrong and once I got it right, so I'm going to exclude that one from my workflow. So you select the ones you want to include in your workflow, and then you can make them available, and then you have this sort of graphical view that you can also use to edit to then analyze, uh, and this is the RNA-seq workflow, and so that allows you to see all the steps and all the, the, the connections you've made. You can do these manually if you want, if you're so inclined, and or you could add a workflow or, or step in the workflow and so forth. So there's, it's a quite um, uh, uh, sort of powerful sort of uh, workflow editor as well. So, yes? You mean if you wanted to do from the command line? Yes, yeah, so you can find out the commands, the versions of the tools, which arguments you used, and so forth. So it keeps track of all that. Yeah, so that's available. But you can export the command line script. Not, I don't think you can. Not as a command line script. No, it's not a. It's not a tool to export a, a command line that you can then copy into, and vice versa. It doesn't do. You can't copy in a script, a command line into Galaxy either. Yes. So he's so even as, as installed Galaxy at OICR, so he knows it very well as well. So can you repeat that? They can use your own version. Yes. 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 So yeah. So if you have your own instance, of course you have. You know. You know which tool, which version of the tool you installed. But from the user interface, you can't extract those. You can extract text versions, but not executable versions. Okay, almost finished. So, 
There's lots of tutorials, videos, mailing lists, Twitters, and etc. for uh, Galaxy. Um, there's a Vimeo.com uh, Galaxy channel, so the, all the, the tutorials and, and Galaxy are on Vimeo. And uh, if you go to that page, there's a specific uh, tutorial. For example, there's one on ChipSeq. So we don't cover ChipSeq in, in our workshops here, but if you're interested in ChipSeq analysis, there's uh, uh, tutorials and tools and so forth on how to do that. The, um, as I mentioned, there, this is a Traxster, how to use uh, RNA-seq with Traxster. So there's a tutorial on that. Uh, quickly, I make mention of Genome Space, which is another tool that uses Galaxy and, as part of the, uh, and it's a, a, uh, a space that connects, basically, get, Genome Space connects a bunch of tools together. And so it connects, basically, all of these tools. So it connects Galaxy with Cytoscape, with uh, Syschrome, with ArrayExpress, with... Uh, Git tools, uh, Genomica, which is a stats package, uh, and so forth. And so all of these, and, and of course, UCSC is also fully integrated. But in genome space, you can do so the output of one program becomes the input of the other program, and, and genome space facilitates that and, and that transfer of that data. So, other useful resources I mentioned Galaxy, it's got um, uh, that's the page. Uh, the Twitter account, the user support uses Biostar, and we'll hear some more about Biostar tomorrow. Um, Malachi and Obi are, are heavy users of Biostar, and so they, they, they make reference to, to lots of, of useful hints, and, and uh, so that's in there too. Um, and Biostar is actually from uh, Penn State University, so that's one of the reasons why Galaxy uses it, because they're also at Penn State. Um, other, uh, Open Helix is, is a commercial, actually helped us, but it has some free uh, tutorials on, on uh, your CSC genome browser, and it has some for sales uh, tutorials on, on Galaxy, which I don't recommend, because there's lots of free stuff available. Uh, UCSC has uh, a lot of information. Uh, Seek Answer is actually a good uh, website to go to if you want to ask and find out or read other people's answers about uh, sequencing technology questions. And so he said, I'm having a problem with uh, uh, my sequence, uh, my structural variant colors from, you know, uh, th that I've been using. I'm getting this weird sort of display. You know, does anybody know how to do that? So you can probably look up that question, and somebody's probably already asked that question, and somebody's already answered that question. Or you can go ask new questions yourself. Um, List of papers of interest, and before the coffee break, but we're not going to have a coffee break, you should have uh, something that looks like this. And I'm going to now uh, stop now and get Richard to come in and uh, do his part. Any questions so far before Richard comes on deck? <laughs>